Raymond Donald Hong is at the Castro Theater for the San Francisco International LGBT Film Festival. Raymond, what do you have for us? Thanks, Tom. We're outside the historic Castro Theater in San Francisco, and for its 37th year, Frameline will present the San Francisco International LGBT Film Festival. That's older than some of the filmmakers behind the over 200 films that will be screened in front of 75,000 moviegoers across 11 days in June. I think film is the most vital way of storytelling. Um, it's the most extensive, the groups of people that engages, um, the stories themselves and the way it's told through colour and movement, I enjoy the most. I think what I'm surprised and excited about in terms of Frameline over its 37 years is the, f is the development of um, the cinema itself and that it just keeps pushing new boundaries and there's new writers and new directors and every year you might think you're going to be seeing the same thing and you never do. Often with LGBT cinema, there's a, you know, there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of documentaries, it's, it can be quite a, a serious nature and the f festival is often of a serious nature. This year we started to notice a bit more of a lighter trend and maybe it's filmmakers kind of coming of age and in their field and feeling like they can play with the genre a bit. So we just decided with the Otter themed festival to have a bit more of a playful attitude too, which crosses over to the animated trailer and then um, Easy Street, the band, who play this music for the trailer too. So we're just keeping it upbeat. I think the most important thing about Frameline is its community and servicing that within San Francisco and the Bay Area and nationally and globally too. And I think that's what we do best actually, is bring people together, especially in this age of technology where people are online a lot, the best experience is still in those theatres. The Castro Theatre will serve as the main venue for the festival, while the Victoria Theatre and Roxy Theatre will be the two additional venues in San Francisco for the festival. Roberta Gonzalez Gregg is outside the Roxy Theatre and Alice Heimsoth is at the Victoria Theatre, both in the Mission District and just a 22 minute walk away. Roberta? Raymond, thanks. The Roxy is San Francisco's oldest continually operating theatre. Now at 104 years old, it has been functioning as an independent art house theatre since the 1970s, showing the best of art, music, foreign language and documentary films. It is home for some of the city's most popular festivals, including Indie Fest, Doc Fest, Noise Pop, and of course, Frameline. Just a 22 minute walk down 16th Street from the Castro Theater, it is the smallest of the theaters in the festival with just 238 seats, so tickets sell out very fast. Here are some of the films making their premiere here at the festival. In the feminist movement of the 1970s, a parallel revolution of lesbian writers, philosophers and activists was taking shape. These key players created a revolutionary sisterhood from Montreal to Texas through New York. In Lesbiana, Une Révolution Parallèle, filmmaker Marion Fouget's documentary serves as a living yearbook and virtual reunion of these courageous women, many of whom are now in their 70s and 80s. You know, when you're living in it, you don't realize you're making history until after it's over. Last year's Audience Award for Best Documentary went to Call Me Kuchu, a film on the homophobic conditions in Uganda. Another African country is highlighted this year in Born This Way. More people are imprisoned each year for homosexuality in Cameroon than any other country in the world, serving sentences up to five years. With intimate access to the lives of two young gay Cameroonians, Born This Way sketches a vivid portrait of day-to-day -day life in modern Africa. Lyrical imagery, devastating homophobia, glimpses of American culture, and a hidden camera courtroom drama coalesce into a story of what is possible in the global fight for equality. Même pas. Déjà qu'il y a des lois qui sont sorties comme quoi les gens de même sexe si on les attrape en train de faire les trucs qui doivent être condamnés, je sais pas si c'est de combien de temps. 3 à 5 ans. 
Donc, quand on est en public, on doit éviter au maximum. Maximum. Foremost in my mind tells the story of a former Olympic medalist, Gail Marquis and Audrey Schmaltz, a couple with age differences I can relate to, but no differences, however, on how positive they are on their accomplishments and relationship. Truly a celebration of a love story. But you don't have a man in your life. And I said, well, I'm not looking for a man. So she said, well, if you were looking for somebody, what would you be looking for? Tell me about this man. Well, he'd have to be a BMW, a black man working. He'd have to be taller than me, smarter than me, younger than me. And would you believe within two weeks, I met Gail, so she's my BWW. She's 57 and I'm 75. So you just twist it around. So it's 17 and a half years difference she in the enjoyed, age. Evidently, she enjoys it. In the age. The age difference hasn't proven to be too much of an uh, inhibition outside of we're able to introduce each other. Maybe she wouldn't have come to a basketball game. A chronicle of the iconoclastic life of gay poet, filmmaker, and spiritual visionary James Broughton, one of the defining voices of the sexual revolution, whose groundbreaking artistic celebrations of sexuality and the body influenced generations of the 1960s and 70s to profoundly embrace life and follow your own weird. James Broughton was someone who grew out of post-World War II um, San Francisco Renaissance, and he was a poet, uh, filmmaker, and sexual liberator of that time. Uh, he was very flamboyant, had a philosophy of joy to do all things with great joy and to pass that both through your work and the people that you meet. And he worked actually for decades in creating both poetry and filmmaking and really kind of pushed the boundaries in terms of um, kind of eccentricity around and sexual liberation in independent filmmaking. When I started to make my first film, it was to a large extent to see what my dreams really looked like, to make them very real. James will continually be rediscovered as this kind of golden secret of West Coast Bohemia. He was an outsider's outsider under the underground. James Broughton was a trickster. He had a way of getting at the serious by focusing on the silly. And that's very seductive because it creeps up on you. I see him in the visionary tradition of Blake, Whitman, Ginsburg. In many ways, he was as visionary as they were. But where Whitman alludes to the pleasures of the flesh, James was somebody who lived it. Frameline also showcases diverse LGBT stories with an emphasis on films by and about people of color, transgender people, youth, and elders. You can enjoy the best of LGBT cinema free on your computer. Go to frameline.org for further details. Alice Heimsoth is two blocks further down on 16th Street at the Victoria Theatre. Alice, how's everything down there? Hey, Roberta. What started as a vaudeville house in 1908 is now a 400-seat theatre for plays, concerts, musicals, and movies. After laying dormant for about two years in 1970, the Victoria Theatre was refurbished to its original intent and grandeur. And here are some films that you might want to check out in the San Francisco International LGBT Film Festival. Director Bruno Barreto captures Brazil in the 1950s where a woman writer decides to set sail for Rio de Janeiro and has a life-changing relationship with the wealthy and very butch architect Lota J. Macedo Suarez. Deixa eu apresentar. Essa aqui é a poeta norte-americana Elizabeth Bishop. This is Joaninha, my guardian angel, my black sister. Ah, seja bem-vinda. Dona Elizabeth. Dona Elizabeth, seja bem-vinda à nossa casa. She's saying welcome. Thank you. We say obrigada. Obrigada. Excuse me. Então, meus amores, como é que tá tudo por aí?
That's the new house Lot is building us. Agora vocês estão mais perto do que pão e bombacha, hein? Long way from Vassar, huh? Certainly is. How are your parents? We don't speak. What happened? I live with a woman. They, they know. They found out. They say I'm dead to them. I'm sorry. This is my home now. <laughs>